two of this tournament, round three. Once you hit round three, you are at Gamescon in Cologne, and you will be in the match for the $32,000 prize uh, total, which is up there. And uh, teams coming from around the world, of course, it is going to be Team Solomid and COG coming from America. Team Aeon from uh, Singapore, I believe we uh, said earlier. And obviously, we're waiting yep. to see who's going to be joining them in Europe. Uh, Fnatic versus... Um, it's W14. I never understand whether it's wet or weight or what or what it's meant to say. You never know with these numbers and things like that. But I think Fnatic are 1-0 up in that game, are they? Or yeah, they are. Yeah, as so. far as I know. Um, the admin actually said maybe Fnatic W14 will get a third matchup. Mm. So uh, maybe that one will um, hit a little bit of extra time, if you want to call it that. Get so we hit the stealth and get ourselves out of there. Thankfully, we don't get any AFK warning. I'm going to get extra special gold because I've got Twisted Fate on my side. So, uh, I didn't click it. There we go. So, I guess we're not going to see anything, but we'll see how it happens. Anyway, so, on your screen, it will be the purple side is SK this time and Millennium on the blue side. So, top SK, bottom Millennium. And, uh, well, we can see SK actually... Sneaking round, so Mama's playing um, one of his. I think I think it's one of his favourites. You know, Carthus. He always seems to do very well when he plays Carthus. So I may have just jinxed him, of course. However, we got Soaz on Twisted Fate. So Soaz is probably going to be mid again. Let's have a look. Who's got teleport? Aurelia's got teleport on. Uh, so Wicked's got teleport on SK. So Aurelia obviously is on SK. Yeah, Aurelia on SK. Wicked on the uh, Aurelia. Candy Panda on Tristana, which going to be with Nif on Sona. Now Nif was very aggressive with Sona if I recall last time seeing it. Ocelot's teleporting so Ocelot's going to be top by the looks of it. Possibly? No, you just assume Wicked's going to be top. I don't know what Ocelot's doing. Just going back and forward pressing B for some reason. Is ported back now? Actually he is ported back. Can so I fold another pot by now? Yeah, probably <laughs> maybe. Not quite. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no. exactly what it's done. Yeah, it's... No, what? What's he waiting for? He did disconnect, did he? No, he didn't. Well, they've not really got anything. And again, Yellowstone Kuja this time taking the bottom column. So, uh, it's a little good reverse of what happened in the last game. And Mumu going to pick up the uh, golem. Hasn't quite spawned. going to go any second now. Candy Panda and Nifa are going to start that off for him. And Wet Dream will pick that up. Number 10, meanwhile, is also going to do the same on the Millennium side as Twisted Fate starts that off for him. And he uh, picks that up. So, uh, it is going to be Bombo top versus. So, it's going to be Karthus versus Aurelia up top. Twisted Face versus Cassiopeia in mid. Cassiopeia is immediately going to go aggressive on uh, Soaz. And obviously just going to try and get out of the way. I'm not too sure how that was going to work out. I guess the wild deck maybe swinging that out. It's really going to be down to a lot of it. Down to a slot whether he can actually land that uh, poison dot which he's trying to do there. Down the yeah. bottom. Well, we saw Candy Panda having a massive advantage last game. How's that one going to play out? I guess we'll find out. Yellow Star's obviously got a lot better spray with uh, Ash there. It's got a long time to start with. But you can assume they're going to maybe try and keep things up. Bay Nif's getting caught early on there. Manages to get the tricord already onto uh, Yellow Star. Not going to do a fat lot of damage early on there. But uh, that's the lay of the land, Joe. And I guess we're going to settle into who's going to have the best CS. Yeah, and we've actually um, got a Moomoo here. Obviously, Wet Dream is on the S, uh, sorry, on the Millennium side of the map, and he's just spotted Linak going down in toward this middle area. So Ocelot knows that he's there, and they're actually going to go in here, and they're going to go attacking onto Linak. I'm not sure that they've got the damage that they need at this kind of level to be doing this. So as obviously uh, just chipping away, and Linak is he's going to go down. No, he's not. We've missed first blood down at bottom, but it's all still happening oh. here in that middle area. So as still alive, flash away from Wet Dream. What is so as? Gonna do? Can he stay alive? Yes, just well, about. There's no poison, well, and he's got away from it. And the stun has come in there. Another poison misses. And wow, can you believe that Soaz managed to get away from that one? I can't really get my head around it, <laughs> to be honest. It was a little bit crazy play, uh, you know, from SK there. The fact that they kind of stuck into that fight, where in my opinion they didn't have enough damage to really be picking up that kill. I mean, the fact that Amumu went down first there kind of tells a decent story about it as well. Yeah, and the double kill down the bottom as well. So both AD carries, uh, well they didn't kill each other actually, because Sona ended up getting the kill on uh, uh, for SK, which is not ideal, i got to be honest, but uh, nevertheless, they both went down. First Blood did go to Yellow Star, so he's picked up that Doran's Blade 
and uh, the boots. But yeah, 12 hit points is what he got away with. So as there, I was watching him, and it w if he hadn't have pulled that stun card, he would have definitely been dead. It was like yeah. literally the second he went into the bush, stun card, run, <laughs> and uh, and dodging the uh, the dot as uh, the, the the poison thrown on the floor. So yeah, crazy stuff. And obviously, uh, you know, Wet Dream didn't have his bandage toss, which was like a big thing of that. If it had the bandage toss in there, immediately would have got the stun opening up on Nocturne, which probably would have led to the kill, but yeah, didn't have it. Lots of flashes used, lots of deaths going, so very much early deaths on both sides. So 2-1 to Millennium. Let's see if they can transfer that uh, tiniest of advantages early on into anything. Candy Panda at the moment needs to be careful. Is on his own at the moment. He's going to come around the side. Here comes around the side there. He's going to jump away. He's got three on him there. As Linak tried to sneak through, but well, using that jump nicely to escape the uh, the feared proc from going off. Yeah, really nicely done there from uh, Candy Panda to keep himself safe. Obviously, he didn't realise uh, the Nocturne was so pushed up there in that brush. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. I'm quite sure. And uh, let's have a look at the, you know, the early CS. It is still very early on in the game. Ash 27, uh, Candy Panda 21. So that's all very uh, even down there. Obviously, we saw in the last game, uh, despite the fact that. Now, before it really got into the kind of mid-game area, the early game was very, very close in terms of kills. And now, we did see the Dragons all go into SK. Most of the map coverage was all about SK. A bit of damage put down in the middle there onto Soaz, who, of course, uh, playing that Twisted Fate there in the middle that had the miraculous escape. Uh, that's what happens when you're a gambler. Sometimes you get lucky. Indeed. So we're just seeing... I'm just watching Ocelot versus Soaz there. They're pushing quite aggressively on Soaz. Obviously, got the lock. Once you get the lock on him, it's going very aggressive. Wildcard's going out, just dodging back and forward. Let's have a peek down bottom. Nothing really down to see. Yes, there. Candy Panda trying to zone them out, maybe. Got to be careful. Niff getting caught there quite heavily. Also, got the minions hitting him because he just did the damage uh, spiral he has, but immediately gets the uh, everyone turning on him. Stripped a good 300 hit points off him straight away. Seen uh, Yellow Star backing up, so he's going to carry on farming. Let's have a look towards the top. Mama's been back and bought, got himself the uh, Sapphire Crystal and the Ruby Crystal, along with those boots that he had at the start. Meanwhile, Wicked has only had one trip back and got the boots. Let's have a look. Ocelot is actually just his fate. It is no, he didn't go back. Just a Doran's ring and boots, pretty much identical. Yeah, Doran identical between the two, but uh, a ward. On Twisted Fate at the moment, so so as I'm intrigued to see how in mid because we just didn't see him in mid throughout the Dreamax tournament and throughout many of the ga games we did online with uh, Millennium. So it's a new position for me seeing so as here. Of course, he always did solo top, so he's certainly used to being a solo player. Uh, CS wise, let's have a look between these top two. Like you said, Mama on 43, Aurelia on 50. So yeah, as expected, Wicked on Aurelia. I, I think it's his best character personally. Every time I've seen him play it, he's done very well with it. And again, yeah. we're seeing Nocturne down the bottom here. Is he going to try and ninja into them bushes? No, he's just going to pull it away. And Candy Brand has just been back to uh, get that little advantage in terms of the items there. Picked up Doran's Blade number three compared to the two that we see on Ash. So uh, we'll see if he can put that extra damage to good use here. He is a level behind. Obviously, I can't see uh, any experience bars and stuff like that. So I can't tell you exactly how far behind he is. Could be that he's just a little bit behind. Yeah, there he actually goes up onto level five. But obviously, uh, the damage that he's done has allowed a decent minion wave to start moving forward. And that will allow uh, Yellow Star and Kuja to start pushing in there a little bit more aggressively as well. Up at top, Wicked full HP, uh, Moma pretty much full as well. In terms of CS, uh, Karthus uh, 56, Irelia 59, so it's super, super level uh, up in that top area, as you can probably expect between two players of this uh, kind of caliber as well. Down in the bottom, we are still seeing Yellow Star doing the uh, nice last hits there at the end. Just putting about a bit of damage onto Candy Panda wherever possible. And one thing that we noted in the uh, in the last game actually was the pressure from Candy Panda was really great. And yet, you know, they both obviously had their support players there. But the difference was Millennium had a Janna there, which obviously you've got that shield, but you've not really got a great amount of healing, especially uh, in this early game to keep yourself in the lane. So I think that's something they've tried to uh, remedy this time, bringing in Soraka um, rather than a Janna, for example, and keeping the Ash that we saw last time on Yellow Star as well. So uh, we'll see how that works out for them coming forward into this one. Maybe a gank in middle. Actually, Linak just getting himself 
out of the way. We see Wet Dream with uh, blue and red buff, and already ultimate is ready. So uh, that could be a dangerous position for Soaz if he doesn't play it carefully. Indeed, so we'll see whether he's going to push out. I don't know whether they realized he was there. I don't think they saw him at any time during that. He just certainly didn't come out of the bush any time soon. And we can see Linak is going down towards bottom, so keep an eye on that as well. Mom has been back and bought, so we'll have a good look at... Uh, what did he get? He's just been and bought a uh, catalyst, so he's completed the catalyst off there, so uh, Ocelot's going to continue farming. And uh, Wet Dream's actually uh -oh. down the bottom. Uh, used the ulti early on there. Soaz getting, uh, using his ulti to come straight down. They're going to try and get on Nif. They will go to get him. No, very nicely done there with the spray, just catching him along with a wild card coming in from range. Meanwhile, that's going to back away. So that was the ulti more, almost just used to completely hinder their uh, their vision rather than anything else. It didn't, you know, he was nowhere near the actual action. Although we're seeing Wet Dream coming round, he's going to catch Soaz as he comes down. Yeah, they're, they're not, not there. No race for you, son. He's going to have to back away. So uh, Millennium 3-1 up here. And looking pretty strong, it has to be said. Yellow Star down the bottom. Hasn't been able to take Candy Panda down too many times. Just the one each uh, for both of them. But uh, Candy Panda's just being kept out of line. Is he going to go straight on to Kuja? There? I don't know if they realise, obviously, how close they are. Kuja is going to pull to wait. So Candy Panda's going to continue on to try and get some CS. You can look at Linak and uh, Wet Dream in the mid there. They're <laughs> both sat ready and waiting. Wow. I don't know whether either of them realise they're there. Now they know that uh, Linak's there. They're going to back away. The double ward placement is there. So as has been dotted up, but uh, also it's just going to force him away. And are they going to try and go for Dragon here? You can see Wet Dream's lingering for it. They want a ward. Yeah, they've just put a ward in the tri bush there. Both got wards in there. See down there, it's just around the back there. He's going to ward it up so they know he's down there. Looks like Ocelot will come down. It's just got to be careful of Twisted Fate above him. The uh, Hawk Shot does go out there. Will they try and catch off Linak? They will. They're trying to come around the side there. Teleport also from Wicked came straight down. They're going to surely take down Linak here. The fear's going to trigger. Will Wicked be able to finish him off? Meanwhile, let's have a look back towards the Dragon. He will take him down. Also going for Dragon. Wet Dream's got to be careful. He's very low though. So as he's going to throw that wild card out. Also the ulti coming from Mama up the top there. That will take down Amumu, but Twisted Fate's going to pay the price with his life. And that is two for one. And a Dragon picked up. Nip very low at the back there. Oh, they're going to continue diving on towards Yellowstar. Yellowstar surely going to go down from Ocelot there. He will do indeed. Ca Cassiopeia managing to land the damage. So very nicely played from SK throughout there. And the teleport again paying dividends there for Wicked coming down on towards that ward as well he came down which just cut, cut them in half and I think they're going to pick up this turret as well very nicely played by SK yeah really amazing I just want to kind of step back in time a little bit and mention the real pain in the ass or as a lot of people <laughs> like to call it synergy between the uh, two ultis I mean uh, with Nocturne and Twisted Fate that bottom lane they're like oh crap there goes the ulti from uh, Nocturne and when they can see again they have a Twisted Fate there with them as well yeah you know that can be a real kind of hello surprise and I guess two fast kills there if you really get caught out uh, by that stuff that's going on but yeah I mean Wicked I think a bit unlucky not to be picking up more kills in amongst that one I mean he got the two assists as well uh, but Candy Panda in the mist got one, obviously, uh, Ocelot as well. So spreading the kills around the team. Not sure uh, if that really helps compared to really stacking up one player um, in this middle game, in this mid-game kind of time frame. Uh, but we are seeing Red Buff being taken now by Candy Panda, so he's going to have that bit of extra firepower to uh, go down into his lane once again. And obviously, after killing that tower, now Millennium have to be a little bit more careful about being ganked. The ward coverage should really start to improve from them from this point onwards. We see actually uh, the ward running out here um, just by the ramp down into the southern river. They do have a, uh, a ward in Dragon, which won't really help them out um, at this particular stage. And we see SK really just going about their uh, jungle now, making sure that they've got everything, making sure all these buffs are in their favor. And we've got Nif all the way in there. He was the uh, first man to come in. Candy Panda in range to rocket jump over that, uh, over the brush and in towards that fight. But in the end, it didn't kick off. And we may see Millennium now Four-man push straight into this middle turret. I'm not sure they've got much to offer. Ocelot is going to get hit with the Ash ulti. I can't see a, a thing yeah. whatsoever. But Ocelot is going to go down. But it's Nif who... Uh, oh, no, it was Yellow Star who went down. Uh, sorry, to Ocelot. I thought it was Nif who got the last hits off there. But obviously the poison from uh, Cassiopeia was uh, in great, great damage coming out there. We are going to see Wet Dream. Is he going to go forward? No, they're going to allow this turret to fall, which... 
not that big of a deal, but still losing the middle turret compared to an outer turret, it, uh, to a, you know the top or bottom lane turret is a much more um, you know a, a bigger deficit. It's not the greatest trade-off, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you're losing a lot of uh, a lot of vision across the map. Oh, Nif's going to catch out Kuja here. If Red Dream can manage to land his bandage toss, it would be deadly, but he didn't. Uh, so, looking like Trinity Force is uh, well under completion by Wicked at the top there. He's uh, he's been up there for a while, so he's had it for a while. BF Swords on both AD carriers as well, and uh, Candy Panda continuing to push down bottom. Didn't come up at all no, during the, all of that. Continued to farm while they lost that middle tower. It was more interesting getting the farm, which is I don't know. It, it's good and bad, <laughs> but uh, which is fine. Oh, uh, Hawkshot just going straight round. There's actually nothing there, so uh, Yellow Star's just buying himself some free farm. He's going to go for that Infinity Edge. Almost completed it as well. Just I think it was about 300 gold that was short. Is yes, that's it. All he needs. Which is probably why he's just getting those raids there. He goes straight back and get that Infinity Edge. Wicked continuing to farm nicely against Linak this time. Linak with that uh, Regal's Lantern as you would normally expect on Nocturne. Have a look at Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia's been doing a pretty good job, like you said. That dot uh, killing the kill on the Nif would be like, hey, <laughs> how did I not <laughs> get sure that kill? Last it was when he got a kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, it, let's not get it wrong. He's probably better off going to Ocelot. So uh, yeah, it worked out well for him. Got to be careful at the top there. It's two v one at the moment. Wicked's just going to probably back away. Doesn't want to, uh, you know, as strong as Aurelia is. I'm not sure you can quite two v one just yet. So let's have a look around. Dragon, obviously is back up on 17.30, so uh, a minute and a half away for that. Candy Panda looks like they're going to be four stacking in towards the mid turret, Joe. Yeah, that's a good call for them. I think there were two around there. They know that uh, Momo's up top. They know Twist of Fate's down bottom, not turning base. And taking a 4v2 fight to get rid of a middle tower, definitely worth the uh, worth the hassle for them at this point in time. Uh, we are going to see Nocturne start to move in, but I fear for Millennium that they are going to lose this middle turret. I mean, we see the uh, forward position actually from Wet Dream, and he is going to take damage. The rest of Millennium coming in. Brilliant stun by Nif. Ultigue is going to come out from Carthus. That's going to change how this uh, little fight looks in a minute. And uh, Linak will kill Ocelot. We did have Wet Dream, uh, sorry, Wicked in there as well. I am completely blind. Can't see what the hell's going on. Candy Panda just about escaping wet dream he's surely gonna go down yes it was a stun card from Soaz that finished off the deal so you know I said it was maybe a good idea to get in there probably was on face value but then you have to counter in the fact that Twisted Fate his ult is gonna teleport him wherever the hell he wants and when Linux ult is up well you just can't see a damn thing and that's bad in itself yeah, and the downside is that obviously all five members of uh, Millennium have a global ulti, so, you know, obviously he's, he's blinding them with his Nocturne diving in, which he just did there. Twisted Fate can port in from anywhere. you got the Karthus ulti, the Soraka uh, global heal, and Ash's arrow, which started it all off. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, global synergy, <laughs> as we called it earlier, but uh, it's it, when it works, it works, but it doesn't always work. That's pretty that way. And, and at the moment... SK, they, they did pull together for a great fight, but like you say, that, that kind of backfired them. They were they had a good position then, they, it was worth pulling, pushing in there, but they didn't have Aurelia, so it was 4v5 in uh, in essence of it all. So, And they only got one kill, despite using all five ultis, I believe, uh, we use them. They got the, the singular kill, despite losing the mid-tower. So 7-5, the slight advantage for Millennium, and the Dragon has just respawned, so, which is why they're all stacking up in and around it. That's... Uh, we're going to assume Wet Dream's going to try and keep his eye on so he can maybe get a uh, bandage toss around there. And Linak is possibly trying to uh, get a cheeky shield build up here. Didn't use it any time in there though. And they did pick up the dragon, so that will be the second dragon for SK, I believe. There. Did they get the first one? Yes, they did. Yeah. Oh no, Millennium right. got the first one. Mm. My gold 680. So, mm, buh, 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 buh. have you not bought anything? Mine's 150. I've only, definitely only had one. No, I have bought. Uh, Millennium had the first one. What, okay. 150. Ah, that makes sense then. Even though I bought a door and shield as well. Oh well. <laughs> so. Uh, we've got Tristana there up at top. Candy Panda, of course. Uh, just going to take herself that red buff. I'm wrong. They got a tower, didn't they? That's the 150 gold. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> Just being up. nice and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Two towers at 150 plus uh, 190, 680. Mm -hmm. 
good stuff. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Antics, I, I like to call that. Uh, yeah, back to the game. We've got a uh, decent stack of Millennium stop, 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 around stop. this middle area, but yeah, top we will see Candy Panda get the kill onto Soaz, and this tower is gonna fall almost indefinitely as well. But in middle, we see Millennium trying to make up for it by pushing a second tower in this middle area. But there goes the ultimate. That's a big ultimate coming out there, and Yellow Star surely is gonna fall down. No, he's managed to escape. Moment now, the focus ultimate is gonna come off from Nocturne and he gets the kill onto Ocelot. Okay, now we can see again. Wet Dream is going to get killed either way here because the ulti from Karthus is up and Nif manages to survive with hardly any HP. This could be the interesting part though. Wicked is moving down. Will he go for anything? No, he won't. Yeah, well, uh, actually Millennium aren't that low that he could probably uh, take down two of them there anyway. So, you know, kind of equal exchange in all fairness there. We saw the uh, top turret going down. The gank uh, was a 2v1 on that top with um, Wicked and Candy Pan to take that one. They managed to keep their tower alive in the middle, that inner tower, so it's not all that bad. We've seen Trinity Force being completed now as well for Wicked, so that's always a good thing. And he's kind of pushing through this jungle, just keeping that aggressive position up. The great thing, um, you know, about an Irelia, that they can move in there quickly, and if they catch someone unaware, Irelias are very difficult person to go 1v1 against. You're going to have to use some kind of escape there. Yeah, and Yellow Star was taken down to 25 hit points again in there, so uh, very low indeed, which is why they went in. And, you know, a Moomer ulti went off brilliantly, Sonna's ulti followed it up brilliantly. They've got nobody there to do the damage, because yeah, Aurelia and... Uh, uh, and who was it? Was it Cassiopeia or Tristana? Well, the, one of them was up top with Aurelia. So, Stana, yeah. Yeah, so there was just there was no damage. So they used two great stunning ultis, but nothing to follow it up. So if they'd have been there, there probably would have been a lot of deaths. Certainly, uh, Yellowstar would have gone down, whose arrow went straight in and led to the kill, which Linak dived on. So, you know, they're, they're kind of being hampered at the moment, SK. The, the, the three team fights they've had, they've only actually been a team in one of them. Um, and they've been caught out in the other ones. So at the moment they're going to have to just make sure they don't get caught out like that too many times, especially with the global ultis, like we mentioned, of uh, Millennium. And remember, SK are one game up in this. It is a best of three. It is a, for a place in the finals to reach the Intel Extreme Masters in Germany. And uh, Cologne which is just uh, August 17th to 21st, so just in two, week, two three weeks' time. So uh, not that far away. Um, and at the moment, SK, they are starting to group up at last, so they are going to come in. Looks like they're going to group them in. Although you can see Candy Panda's uh, just clearing out the top. There's a lot of ping going down, actually. Millennium pinging down there, and then just going, oh, Candy Panda appears. It's like you normally get in your solo game. You're like, oh, big stack! Oh, it's all been wiped out. Someone ports in on it or something. But uh, as it is, 22 minutes. Potential for a Baron, but I don't think it's going to come too soon, because uh, I think Millennium want to keep pushing this mid lane, which is Looking at, just went to see whether any arrows led it because Nip was at the front there. You've got to be careful with that, getting in front of uh, Wicked like that. Yeah, I mean, Wicked, the way obviously Aurelia works, I mean, it's still fairly uh, tanking terms. Can take that arrow and probably get away from there. Obviously, uh, Mercury treads as well, so you know, you've got that uh, tenacity in there, which is always a, uh, a nice thing to have um, against a team with so much stun in it. Uh, but we are seeing pings going down. They're clearing out these wards in this middle bush area, so it looks like SK could possibly be getting ready, and Wicked is going in there 1v3. And Millennium ran away from that one. I guess they thought that SK were closer than they actually were. I mean, they had a good few seconds on them there, to be honest. If they had turned around and tried to nuke him, uh, it could have maybe worked out in their favor. But as it happened, they didn't go for it. Wicked is now going to head down uh, towards the south. What time was the Dragon? 24.05. Ooh, so we'll see what that's going to do there. And arrow does go off. As far as I saw, didn't hit anyone yet. Yeah, went straight through the middle and uh, Wet Dream and Oslot just parted the seas and straight through they went. So they're going to continue pushing this mid turret. You can see Tristan is now having to come down. Wicked is a long way away. Remember, he's down bottom. Bad he does have team. teleport. Got to be careful. Going to have a look around there as Wet Dream does go in. Did, did the bandage toss. Didn't bother using the ulti though. So I'm not sure whether he feels he's quite got the damage there. Here comes Tristan. And now Tristan is there. Now he would love to have used the ulti. But... Uh, 
Uh, again, they're backed away. So again, they're getting in a good position, but not having the damage dealers there just in time. So Wicked's continuing down the bottom there. So split pushing from SK. Uh, we saw them doing it actually last time. It was Candy Panda doing it, but this time it is uh, Wicked trying to do it. He does have that teleport to join in. Has got a... Uh, a Trinity Force and just in time to get Dragon to see if anyone's aware of the Dragon now being up. Oh, I thought Kuja was going to do the usual, just come around and place a ward in the middle of nowhere. Oh, are they going to be coming around there any minute? They'll see each other and there we go. Will they engage each other? That's the question. They're going to pick the Dragon up. Will they be able to go for it? Candy Panda's being forced away from it. He's going to come back around the side there and Wicked is going to get feared up there. Here comes Candy Panda. Perfect positioning around the side there. He has got Linak diving on him. Linak is going to go down. Next side, like Wet Dream will go down in the process as well. Will Mama manage to pick up any more kills from that? Did take down Ocelot. So that was a one for one in that engagement. And Wicked needs to be careful because the rest of his team have had to run away. They're all on nothing. While he may have a lovely ulti that gives him all the health back, nobody else did. So uh, again, though, pretty even. Once once both teams actually had all five players there, it was a pretty even fight. 10 9 the kills. Yeah, and again, just to touch on uh, that little push before, which happened around the uh, inner middle turret. To be honest, I think Millennium could have had that one. I mean, they knew Irelia was down on the bottom lane, uh, albeit with a teleport, which is always dangerous. You don't want to jump in there mid-fight or something. Uh, Candy Panda up at top. So you knew that the, uh, the damage wasn't really there. I mean, we saw it in the fight before, actually. The three that were there, Amumu, yeah, great ulti. Uh, Sona, great ulti. But they're crowd control ultimates. They're not putting out enough damage to really uh, be picking up kills. And Cassiopeia, of course, was jumped on. That made total sense. Um, and without those two damage dealers, SK really need to be careful when they're going for these split pushes all the time that they don't get caught unawares by Millennium. And we saw Linak there just moving down towards this bottom lane. We've got Moma there as well. And Candy Panda decides, okay, I'm not going to take that one. I'm just going to back away from it. Banshee's Veil being built onto um, Wet Dream as well. And it was Ocelot earlier on who said, we need Banshee's Veil. So looking at the uh, CS, Candy Panda's actually took over Ash now, only just though, but uh, Ash has got that uh, Zeal along with the Infinity Edge, Candy Panda meanwhile has got the Infinity Edge and Triple Thorns Blade, hasn't gone for anything attack speed wise yet, so may go towards probably the Zeal soon, um, yeah. and the Double Thorns on, so nearly a Phantom Dancer actually, got the Cloak of Agility as well, and they went for Boots of Mobility, uh, Boots of Swiftness sorry, uh, on uh, Ash rather than uh, Berserker Greaves or Mercury Shreds or anything like that, so went for the speed to get the hell away from uh, Irelia, I suspect, is uh, what that was more for. Having a look, so uh, Nif actually got that uh, Kindle gem, so Shirelia's Reverie probably going to come out very soon. Uh, looking at Mama, Mama's got quite a bit of AP, 247 AP, got that uh, needlessly large rod along with the Rod of Ages, so trying to build towards Rabadon's Death Cap there, Rod of Ages first though. Let's have a look at Cassiopeia, how he racks up as an AP as well. 265 AP, obviously come with the Rylers and the uh, Sorcerer's Boots. And a ward just being placed there from Linak. So they're just keeping their eyes on this Baron as we are up to the 27 minute mark. Like you said, you know, teams can sometimes get locked on focus. It looks like they're going to take this top turret down. I think they're going to give up on it. Yep, they're backing away. So Millennium going to take a uh, the second turret of the game despite their uh, fairly early dominance. And really, from a, from a tower pushing point of view, if they get free run on it, with the fact that they got Nocturne Ash and Twisted Fate, they'll be able to take a tower down very, very quickly. However, yeah. whether they've been able to keep them all standing during the fight. And again, Wicked's going super aggressive around the side there. Tries to come around. He does get fear proc. He's just diving back in there. Pops his ulti. Tries to land a bit of damage there. And you can see Wet Dream trying his best to get involved. Manages to take the arrow to the face. Looks like Wet Dream will go down. Mama's getting caught there. So Mama's going to go down. But it doesn't matter. It looks like Candy Panda will get taken down. Yellow Star very low on help. But I think he's going to get away with it. Oh, that's going to take Nif down, I think. Yes, he will do. The ulti finished him off. Ocelot is around the side. He's got to be careful. He's been Caught out, twisted fate, ports oh, oh, oh. in, nice stun card, and he pops his ulti on him. So double stun, but he finishes him off, and so as picks up the kill. Meanwhile, Candy Panda, uh, Yellow Star, sorry, also continued to push onto uh, Wet Dream around the side there. Wet Dream going to come around and try and bandage toss him on the tower, I think. Yeah, no, he gets managed to get in there, get a nice bit. Oh, goes for the ultimate, he will finish him off. Very nicely done from Wet Dream, or was not ready for that. Because obviously, yes, he didn't use his ulti in the main fight. He had no reason to. So I don't think Yellow Star was expecting that either. Meanwhile, Bot Tower goes wicked. down to Wicked. Yeah, teleported down there, did he? Yeah, yeah. 
He, uh, he actually backed away from that fight, and I think it was a great move to teleport there. I mean, he knew everyone was at top number one, but they wouldn't have been ready for him until he was right onto that turret, and obviously uh, saw there was a decent stack heading there as well. So just an overall nice little push there from Wicked. Obviously, uh, the kills are only 13-12 still. It's very, very even. In terms of turrets, we are now bang even once again. So, uh, you know, there's... <laughs> Not much of a difference going around. I mean, if we look down on the um, on the CS, actually the only massive difference is like Sona's got a few more than Soraka. <laughs> That's <laughs> how level it is at this stage of the game. Yeah, battle of the supports. <laughs> Sona That's with how the this kill. game's gonna be won. Yeah, and Shirelia's reverie now on Sona, like we mentioned earlier, so building up towards that. Yeah, I mean, but item builds are pretty much coming to a complete force of nature on Aurelia along with that Trinity Force. So very tanky, very damagey uh, is Aurelia, as we've seen many times on uh, Wicked. Uh, we've just seen them come through again. So <coughs> it was, I don't know, it was kind of like that was strange fight, the last one. It was like a case of Millennium kind of didn't want to engage, but then got forced into it and then thought, hang on a minute, we're actually doing okay. Maybe we should continue fighting. It was a, a very strange fight. They're going to get this tower down, though. They're not ready though, they're going to get dived in, remember, Amumu will not have his ulti up, he just used it a moment yeah. ago, so there's no way he's going to be back up yet. Yellow Star's being focused in by Cassiopeia, they will get taken down, Cassiopeia going down as well. So one for one there, I think, actually maybe two for one, three for one there, as Ocelot gets a couple more kills. Will the uh, ulti better finish him off? No, it won't. So that was uh, a couple of dots and catching them there, so very nicely done, and well... SK now are going to have the ability to just push straight in, maybe get straight for this tower. Will they come across? Dragon is up. They've kind of like decided to go for Dragon instead of pushing the pressure onto just uh, Twisted Fate and Soraka there. So mm. yeah, instead they've just decided to take the Dragon. We took, we take the Golden Run because they they how long's the spawn time? And not that long. Yeah, so perhaps the best choice by uh, SK there. So taking that gold advantage and for the first time taking the leading kills. Yeah, I'm not sure they were really going to be able to push so hard onto this middle area as well, even. And we are seeing that fight there. Soaz versus Candy Panda. And, well, Candy Panda, we can say, obliterated in there. He actually uh, did drop down uh, very, very quickly to Twisted Fate, who uh, you know, now already built up here the uh, Lich Bane. And it's Carth the Salty as well. Very, very strong. Yeah, and Carth the Salty as well, really helping out. So, you know, very difficult position to call this game, I'd say, from a commentator's point of view. We've got now Millennium, obviously, in onto Baron. And this is one of those make or break situations now. SK do have one man less. And that man is, of course, Candy Pan, who could be a very vital point. So, Millennium will take Baron. And now SK are going to say, okay. Let's probably be defensive. Yeah, and very nicely done there. Like we mentioned earlier, the global ult is um, very well done. Carthus uh, popped his brilliance potion up to 400. Well, he was up to 475. He's now 530 because he's just got the Baron buff. 475 AP landing just at the time. So as to end, oh, I'll teleport in, and that's a nice kill, which obviously led straight to Baron. That's what they're after. Gave them that 4v5 advantage, taking Candy Panda, the main AD, out of the fight, and very well played. So Millennium. Uh, using that global ulti to uh, good advantage. So Mama is, uh, like we say, 530 AP now down the bottom. Obviously, it's uh, slightly skewed by the fact that they do have the uh, Baron buff. 573 on Twisted Fate as well. So he's got himself the uh, Ravenous Death Cup and the Lich Bane and building up towards possibly Azonia's Hourglass there as well. Um, yeah, it looks like he will be. He's got a uh, Brilliance Potion also in his pocket, just ready, ready, ready for when to use it. But, uh, SK... You know, they had a good advantage, they were right to pull back, but they were just caught out with sort of last minute greediness. I don't know, but it's, it's very hard to sort of not be caught out by a double ulti like that. Yeah, definitely. It's all of a case. Sometimes, you know, it is just a case of luck. The fact that you're, you're in this great looking position and then all of a sudden, bam, bam. It's all, uh, this stage of a game that's so close and SK know they win this one, then they're going to Gamescom. They don't have to play any more games today. It's all finished for them. They can just concentrate 
on that Intel Extreme Masters tournament and uh, you know their preparation for that one. But at the same time, they have to keep their eyes open to everything that can possibly hurt them in this game because Millennium, no slouches as you know, the uh, former against all authority team, second place in the season one championships behind Fnatic. Here we go. Ice Arrow comes out from Ash. Ulti from Nocturne is going to go off. And let's see how this one all ends up. It's a big fight inside of the middle. They're going to focus in, first of all, on Linak, who flashes away, but surely will die. Yes, he will. So, down to a 4v4 now. And it was Nif who got the, fight, oh, got the kill there, which wasn't the best thing to ever happen in SK's history. But still, they got one kill away, which, uh, you know, Baron Buff taken off Nocturne, which is always a bit of a bonus. They lost Cassiopeia in the mix of it. 5-7-3 we have on Ocelot at the moment. Not been having his greatest of games, and that Cassiopeia pick was, for me, a little bit of a strange one. Definitely a, an unorthodox pick uh, from Ocelot. Not sure if he's uh, been particularly playing it a lot recently, but uh, as you mentioned before, Demon, I can't remember if or definitely when I've seen uh, Cassiopeia in a game. Yeah, and he got kind of caught in as well. He, he, I think he flashed in. I'm not too sure what it was, whether he, whether he flashed in. I think he flashed in, tried to do the ulti on Ash, which would have stoned him. But I think Ash immediately turned around, which, you know, and then the sort of like the whole thing was, I think Soaz and Ash both turned around and leathered him. Uh, so, yeah, it, they both kind of caught out position, which is the exact same that happened to Linak. Linak, uh, it's, it's the issue with Nocturne, you know, when you dive in, if you go in too early, everyone just turns around You're and dead. snaps you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, which is exactly what happened there. So... But really, it was a case of you know SK were caught out of position, or they were they were coming across the jungle, got caught by the arrow, albeit it went into a Moo, Moo which is like perfect placement. Candy Panda jumped out of the way of it. They've got vision on him. Candy Panda having a good go, Kuja there comes around, tries to finish him off. Oh, tragic! And uses the flash to get out of there. The arrow actually went through. Didn't see if it caught any, anyone though, so I don't think it did. Meanwhile, they're going to come around the side there. This could be a telling battle, you know. If they manage to land it nicely, I'm not too sure whether the Umumu ult is going to be up. That is going to be one, two, three kills, surely. Yes, it will be. That's going to be a double, maybe a triple kill, though. Oh, we got away with it, though. Aurelia is going to just get away and go thanks someone to the tower. <laughs> when, uh, meanwhile, we can continue to keep vision on him. Nicely done there from Linak diving in, but he's going to be... Detriment. Will he get any kills? No, he will not. They were all so low, but he couldn't quite finish them off. And that was, what, five for one? Very nice turnaround from SK there. Considering it was like a fight, nobody was sure they wanted to re engage. It turned out very well. And remember, that bottom tower is down, so they're going to continue and push straight on towards that base turret. Will they get there in time? That's the question. There is only going to be Soraka spawning in uh, four seconds' time. Ten seconds on Carthus. I think they're going to possibly get a bit of damage on it. I don't think they'll do enough, though. They're going to try and tank it, but... I'm not sure they've quite got the burst to finish it off before everyone gets in there. Yes, they will. They'll take it down nicely. I don't think they'll get the inhib, though. Now, two are up already, and, uh, you know, it's Karthus who can come in there. Who drop the lay waste, and actually he's going up top. They expected that SK wouldn't overextend themselves, which, uh, you know, you can expect them not to do in a situation like this. And all of a sudden, you know, the kills starting to work themselves a lot healthier over towards SK. We're seeing uh, Candy Panda now, who has the Phantom Dancer. Obviously, it has the Infinity Edge from earlier. Banshee's Veil coming up now as well. And you look over at Ash, what does she have? Okay, so Phantom Dancer and the Infinity Edge uh, got a Negatron Cloak and Catalyst to protect us. So they're going to be pretty much, well, Aside from the boots, actually identical uh, moving forward in their builds. Identical, and that was a, uh, another dragon picked up by SK. So every dragon so far in this game, I believe. Uh, fine. We've already got one, two towers. Yeah, pretty much. I've kind of frozen. Oh, no, I'm all right. I'm back. No, not too sure what's going on there, but my game decided to uh, freeze itself. But 37 minutes in, and we're getting to the point where one big team fight will uh, decimate it. And what was the respawn? 38-47 is when Baron's due, so just a minute's time. Moma is porting back, has got the Void Staff, and uh, along with the Rabadons and Rod of Ages he had a while ago, it's going to go towards... What's he going to buy? What's he going to buy? He's keeping us on his toes. He's got a brilliant potion, so uh, that looked like it was a callback for the rest of the team to say, go back and uh, buy, and then we're going to make one push. A... Hey, uh, Randy and Zoman actually on uh, Nocturne now, along with the Phage, the Trin Zeal, so going towards that uh, Trinity Blade. Yellow Star is porting back, like he's mentioned, there was 
Banshee's Veil on, and there goes Banshee's Veil. So, like there, <laughs> pretty much identical between Ash yeah. and Candy Panda. Uh, except uh, Candy Panda, I think, is slightly far further ahead now in the build, despite the fact he was behind in the lane phase. So, 637 for Candy Panda, 466 for Yellowstar. Yeah, so he's managed to pull out of it despite Yellowstar picking up that first blood. Yeah, and Candy Panda on the way to, uh, you know, building up even further. We may see around this middle. And, you know, Wicked, we have to point out as well, I uh, spotted earlier, he got himself Hex Drinker now, got himself Atmos Impaler. He is 3012 with a nice standard 300 uh, CS as well, over 300 CS. So Wicked is, if he wasn't scary already, he's looking very, very uh, strong at this point. But it looks like SK may be putting all their hopes in towards a Baron. Actually, they've got two Banshee's Veils up, which obviously can be uh, popped very quickly if they're not careful. There we go, ulti from Amumu. We'll see the flash out. Nocturne comes in with his ulti. It's a few seconds of blindness for everyone on stream. There goes Moma down. Surely they're going to be able to finish this one off. Ocelot will be the one to kill uh, Moma. There goes Kuja. Linak is going to follow. It's all now on yellow start and another flawless fight from SK they're far from healthy but chances of them uh, losing another man here I'd say are absolutely zero and they're gonna head straight up towards Baron no surprises in that one and uh, well just another great great team fight um, I'm not I missed like all the kills going on there wicked managed to pick one up uh, actually he's up to 15 assists now so three assists in that fight from Wicked, and you can see how fast they take Baron down as well at this stage of the game. Gonna go through, clear out this jungle. 46.50 is the next spawn time on Baron. So uh, we'll see what SK's plan is. All going home, probably for one last shot before they uh, get into a position to try and close this game out against the French team Millennium. Yeah, and I thought it was going to backfire, actually, because uh, it, all, it all triggered off for that bandage toss onto Twisted Face. Aurelio uh, was immediately on it. They were both on it, and then he popped the Zonja's Hourglass just as everyone blew their abilities, and I thought that was maybe going to turn into Millennium's favour, but it didn't. And then, you know, Millennium split up. The Nocturne went diving off one direction. Uh, yellow, yellow... <laughs> Was Yellow Star was the other way, and it was just like, well, hang on a minute, guys, you need to be all together, and then they just all split away, and well, and the rest is history, really. So very nice fight there from SK, and using the, the stuns as well, obviously, uh, the Nif with the the, uh, the ultimate from uh, uh, Sona there as well, catching everyone everyone that counted, and Kuja went down very quickly because once she gets targeted and picked off. It's inevitable. So yeah. with this Baron buff, they are going to get straight on towards it. I don't think Millennium are going to put up a fight for this. No, they won't do. It's, uh, it's almost inevitable that they're going to lose that. Meanwhile, it looks like Twisted Fate is going to try and split push as best as he can while he goes in. And he can always just global ulti straight back in there. But uh, as it is, he's going to continue pushing up towards top. 573 AP on Twisted Fate, 518 on Mama. So they've certainly got the ability power. They've certainly got the damage but there's Banshee's Veils being picked up and the healing abilities they're gonna continue to put that damage on towards that tower look at that just a couple of shots is all it takes from Candy Panda just bang bang just a couple more shots and stripped down to half all that was Candy Panda just just with about six or seven shots he's going that much damage that fast has got the last whisper as well now completed where is Twisted Fate going? Down the bottom there, so he's ported down the bottom. Actually, he used Zonya's Hourglass, so I think Aurelia must have been on him at the top there. Um, mm. Yeah, and he comes back down, and he's going to push it towards that bottom turret. Bottom turret's only on 960 health, but I think they need to be more worried about the mid turret here, as Candy Panda is almost certainly going to take it down. Actually, he just missed the tower. I was going to say, finish it off, guys. <laughs> don't, don't just the usual case of the, the nobody shoots it at the end there. They're going to push on towards this middle tower here. I think, Joe, you might want to take it away, because this is going to finish very soon. Yeah, and they're focusing straight in on Mama. There goes the ulti coming out from Nocturne. Everything uh, kicking off once again. SK started to move a little further back. They were going in for Linak, who could survive. Candy Panda flashes over the top of the wall. And we are in now a five versus two, uh, sorry, three situation, if I could count. And they're pushing straight in. There goes a flash over from Ocelot. Ice arrow from Ash may be safer for a couple of seconds. Kuja has the dot on. And there goes the final man. Twisted Fate is down. Inhibitor, they should probably finish off before they start trying to attack these towers just in case anything terrible should happen which you know with the next person coming in 26 seconds is not going to happen and SK are going to take down these two turrets are going to finish off the Nexus and this is going to be 
a 2-0 victory for the New Look SK in their first major tournament. And I tell you what, they look absolutely brilliant. Two great games they've played here against Millennium. Yeah, the first one was a perfect game for them. Second one was definitely a bit shaky, and Millennium definitely certainly had their uh, chances in there, and they were leading all the way up to about 19 kills. So it was it was a pretty even fight throughout for them. So uh, fair play to Millennium. Obviously, they were the runners up in the season one championship, so they are no slouches. But fantastic stuff from SK. So they go through. This time they qualify. You know, people were saying, why were they not at Dreamhack? They got knocked out by Gamed, who two of their players they have on their team now. So you know, they performed very well, and they are going to be a challenge for anyone at the uh, finals. I believe they. They've got a, a point to prove or something going on there. And let's not forget, one of their players is in a restaurant in the middle of some country on holiday. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there are really words for that. It's not often you get a, you know, a qualifier tournament for a $32,000 uh, tournament where one of your players is sat in a restaurant having like <laughs> one course between each game and has got a crowd of crazy wherever he is people uh, behind him <laughs> cheering him on so you know wet dream the man of all conditions apparently you can play wherever so uh, yeah a really great performance from SK not sure exactly what our next game coming up will be obviously we'll uh, have a talk to the admins etc to see what's going on the upper bracket team at least one of them um, is confirmed if I just go over to the ranking here we can show that I doubt it's been updated already unless the admins are like on fire today no of course um, and then round so round two is what we've just focused on there SK will go through to round three which means their tournament here today is finished they're qualified for uh, Gamescom no problem uh, up at the top Fnatic versus W4T was 1-1 so, uh, winner of the final game there will go to Gamescom. Down on the bottom of the bracket, Adversa and Wood are playing right now. Unrestricted 